uh, uh, not today, but uh, yeah, la, past few days it was raining cats and dog like continuously for three and four days. It was raining, 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 raining. So it's a mixed match over, right now. Over here it is not rain. <coughs> yeah, for that is fine. <laughs> it is not rain. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes. Coming to Ritika. Ritika, I checked your paper. So you got nine and a half out of ten. It was a really good score. But the only thing where you missed out other functions, you wrote it. But the explanation, at least write two or three lines, right? You explained it. You just explained it in terms of notes. Okay. But when examiner will be checking your answer, she need the proper explanation, right? Though I can understand your point were correct. For explanation, it was correct. Like, ma'am, because of this, this is happening. But still, I need to explain. So you have to, like, for example, if you are explaining that it is downward sloping, so explain it like this: that budget line. Just write it again. Budget line is downward sloping curve because because it will at least give you one line, right? That budget line is. So you have to write maximum whenever the whenever the comes comes. Uh, you know, whenever the questions comes for explanation or they ask you to write feature. So write the feature, the point, and then explain. Okay, so overall it was good, really impressive, very good. Keep it up. Okay, so now today we are going to start the next topic, which is your indifference curve. Okay, so now as we discuss budget line, so today we'll be the same. Similarly, we'll be discussing indifference curve. Okay, so before discussing indifference curve, like before discussing budget line, we discuss few points like consumption bundle, you know, uh, all this, right? So today we'll be discussing indifference curve, but before indifference curve, we'll be discussing few things. First is scale of preference. Okay, scale of preference is uh, when a consumer ranks his preference amongst different consumption bundle, it is termed that scale of preference. For example, I uh, I went to a mall. Okay, there I had only hundred rupees, so I had a choice that I can purchase uh two chocolates and uh, one dress, or I can purchase two dress. And zero chocolates, or I can purchase one dress, one chocolate. So I have three bundles over here, right? Consumption bundle. So I will be making a preference that okay, maybe uh this is my preference that okay, chocolate and dress, and maybe say biscuit and pastries. This and uh, okay, let's just keep it one, or maybe uh footwear and uh, footwear and groceries. Okay, these are my bundles. So I will be, you know, ranking it. Like, okay, number one, my first priority is that I want groceries and footwear. So this will be my first preference. This bundle, this consumption bundle will be my second preference, and this consumption bundle will be my third preference. Right? Instead of you know keeping it that okay, I want this and that, you will be ranking it. So that is your preference scale of preference. Okay. So when consumer instead of you know telling me that first that um, uh, I want uh, this, uh, I want ten quality quantities of this and that, you are going to rank your preference, right? So when a consumer ranks his preference among different consumption bundle, it is termed that scale of preference. Okay. Now. Ah, uh, there can be three possibilities, ma'am. What three possibilities? First, consumer may prefer bundle A to bundle B, right? So, for example, you have different bundle A bundle, B bundle, right? Like this. So, the first thing is that you prefer A bundle more as compared to B. First situation, it can be like this. Second, consumer can prefer B bundle over A bundle, right? And the third one is he is indifferent. Indifference means it doesn't bother it whether you purchase A or B. You are like I'm okay with both. You can purchase anything, right? So there can be three possibility. First, you are choosing A over B. Second, you are choosing B over A. And third one is you are indifferent. Indifferent means you don't care, careless, right? Careless. You don't bother about whether you are purchasing A or B. You are like I'm okay with both the things. Sometimes this happens now that for example you have two, two favorite colors, white and black. Right, so you are like I am okay with both the colors. You can purchase any white or black. I'm I have like I like both of my, both the colors are my favorite one. Right, so the at means at this moment you are indifferent, right? Indifferent between uh, dress A and dress B. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, next thing is okay. Just first write it down. So first of all, you will give a heading scale of preference. And then you will write this, and after that, there can be three possibilities.
Okay, good. Now we are going to do the next one, which is first of all, we will define what is your indifference curve. Okay, though it is missing here. So uh, here I have written indifference curve itself. Okay. So ma'am, what is indifference curve? It is a graphical representation which shows combination of all different consumption bundles which give the consumer same level of satisfaction. So indifference means that whether you are going to purchase A, whether you are going to purchase B, whether you are going to purchase C, D, whatever it is, that is that. Uh, why you are indifferent? Because all of them, all the consumption bundle are giving you same level of satisfaction, right? Yes. Right. So, what is uh, indifference curve? What is your uh, this indifference curve? It is a graphical representation which shows combination of all different consumption bundle which give the consumer same level of satisfaction. Now, I'll tell you how your indifference curve look like. It look like this. Okay. So, this is what. Now, assumption. If you are drawing this indifference curve, you have to write some assumption. So first, the consumer act rationally so as to maximize satisfaction. So you will act rationally here, right? You won't be acting irrationally. Irrationally means, for example, uh, the 100, for 100 rupees, you are getting one dress. Okay. And for 200 rupees, you are getting three dress. So which one you will purchase? You will purchase this one, right? So this is a rational decision. Okay, you will not like no, ma'am. I will only I want only one dress, so I will purchase this. You have to be rational. Rational means according to the situation, what a normal human being thinks. Most right, you don't have to be like why, ma'am. I, uh, I only want one dress, so I will go for it. Why I will go for three dress for two hundred? But uh, thinking here, you are getting a benefit, right? So of course everyone will go for this, right? So you have to be rational. Like the consumer should be rational like it should not think uh, out of box it should it should think within the box okay and next there should be two goods x good and y good third the consumer poses complete information about the prices of the goods in the market so come what can the uh, consumer is doing consumer a uh, consumer poses information about the prices of the goods in the market so that means you are aware of the prices okay for example for for dress a your price is 200 rupees first dress b your price is 300 rupees right like this so you are like the consumer who is going to purchase the things he is aware of the prices of the goods in the market and prices of both the goods are given right x and y good are given next the consumer taste habits and income remain same throughout the uh, analysis so for example you are making the indifference curve so you are like combination a b c like this so over here you are like ma'am i like uh, a and b so that means for example you purchase two of x good and three of y good Second, you purchase one of this and two of this like this, but you are like, again, it is decreasing, right? So you are like, no, ma'am, now I want to purchase more of X. So I will purchase three and this zero. No, suddenly you cannot change it, right? So the taste, habits and income remain same until and unless you don't make a complete table, it will remain same. If you are reducing the consumption of X code, that means you will keep on reducing. If you are increasing it, you will keep on increasing it. Okay, so consumer taste, habits and income remain same throughout the analysis. Okay, and next is monotonic preferences. Very, very important. So ma'am, what are monotonic preference? I'll tell you. This is very important thing. Okay, see, what is monotonic preference? You already know, right? You are giving, for example, you have A dress and B dress. So you are, you are like, I prefer A, right? So you're giving the preference. Monotonic means, mono means only one. Okay. So see, it refers, you have to remember these two terms like first and second, okay? So it refers to those preferences in which consumer always prefer the bundle having either more of both the goods, uh, either more of both the goods or more of at least one good and same of other goods, okay? So what is happening over here? See, you have two goods, X good and the Y good, okay? So what you are going to do, see, whatever consumption bundle you are going to choose, like, for example, you you go you go for this. You are going for this, A and B, right? So, why you are going to choose this? Like, A and B and X and Y, why you are going to choose this? Because it is giving you more of both the goods, right? For example, this was giving you 10 satisfaction. This was giving you 20. But now, this one is giving you 30 and this one is giving you 40. So, why you chose this? 
I will ask you that why didn't you choose this bundle? Why you choose this bundle? So you will say, ma'am, because I was getting more of both, right? As compared to x and y, see x is ten, you are getting thirty. A is giving you thirty, and y is twenty, but b is giving you forty, right? So you are getting more of both the goods. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Right, so that's why you chose it because, ma'am, very simple. Of course, if I'm getting more satisfaction over there, so of course I'll purchase that thing. Why I will purchase this one? Right. So first is clear. Now, second situation can be, for example, you are getting A and B. Right. So it's like, uh, for example, you are getting ten and thirty. So over here, what you are getting more of at least one good. Right. You are getting more of at least one good over here. Okay. For A, you are getting the same. right but at least for y you are getting more na here you are getting 20 but here you are getting 30 right so you will again choose this bundle why because you will say ma'am i am getting more of at least one good na and same of other good so that's why ma'am i will choose this one why will i choose this one right here you are getting more of one good right for second good you are getting more but for first good you are getting same so you will choose the second this option not this option okay so this means monotonic preference so whenever you give preference like for a for b for c for d you give preference so what you see first you check that uh, it should give you more of both the goods right you are comparing here and the highest one will be giving you more of every one so you'll choose this or you will choose the one which will give you more of one good or same of other good it should not be less for example if it is like this that a and b it is like a is giving you 5 and this is giving you uh, 30 so it's giving you less of a right so you will not choose it right it should be that it should give you more of at least one and same of other good getting the point girls this is a quite tricky but uh, very simple to understand that for example i am giving you to make a choice so of course you will choose the one the bundle which will be giving you because you have two goods so that's why more of both good that you will be choosing that one and plus if you are not getting more of both the good you will find that consumption bundle which is giving you at least more of one good out of two goods at least more of one good and same of other good now it's clear very very important you can you will get the direct question what do you understand by monotonic preference and you have to explain these two points right okay laviva you are also getting it yes teacher i am oh good so first of all you will write this indifference curve okay wait wait okay indifference curve then this and then the assumption and then what do you understand by monotonic preference
Are the third and fourth point not same? Uh, third and fourth. Yeah, here the prices of here you are mentioning that prices of both the goods are given, right? But consumer poses complete information. Complete information is why the price of good Y is twenty. The reason behind that, okay? And plus why the price of good X is ten. Why the prices are not same. So he has complete information about the prices of goods in the market. Like complete information means why. In like apart from prices, like why the prices is like this. Okay.
Everybody, you are also done? Sure, I am done. Okay. So let's just start with the next topic. Okay. So now, as I told you that your indifference curve, basically, you know, uh, is someone how your indifference curve looks like and all that, right? So before discussing this, we will be doing the properties of the indifference curve. Okay. So now, what are the properties of indifference curve? So first thing is that indifference curve always slopes downward from left to right. So your indifference curve is always a downward sloping curve from left to right. So it is like this, you can see, as I told you, right? So we can see this one, right? So it is downward sloping, right? It is coming downward from left to right, clear? So indifference curve always slope downwards from left to right. So an indifference curve has a negative slope. So if someone is going moving downwards, so that means it has a negative slope. If any graph moves upward, it means that it is a positive slope. So that means slopes it down, slopes downward from left to right. Now, what is the reason for this? So if a consumer decides to have more of one more unit of one commodity, quantity of other goods must fall so as the total satisfaction remains same. Okay, so you already know that you have to indifference curve means that you are you have to maintain the standard that no matter whether uh, you are like for example you can purchase ten dresses okay so you bought two uh, let's just say it will be hard four okay so you decided that you will take two t-shirts and two trousers okay you have to these were giving you more same satisfaction so what you can do if you want to change it so it will like you can purchase three t-shirts and one trouser. You are okay with this. Plus, you can even purchase two trousers and one, uh, sorry, three 
uh, two t-shirts and three trousers so same but you have to maintain a same decorum right because you can only purchase four product right so because it is uh, you are in difference with both the things because some of where like you were you had many trousers and many t-shirts so you were like okay whether i am going to purchase this or that i'm going to be okay with that okay so if a consumer decides to have more unit of one commodity says apples quantity of other goods say oranges must fall so that total uh, utility or total satisfaction remain same clear yes, okay now indifference curve is always convex to the origin right you have basically three shape one is concave one is straight line and now one is convex okay so ic means indifference curve is strictly convex to the origin that means your mrs which is the slope because your shape depends on slope right for budget line for example you are getting it why your budget line is straight line so you can even mention that mre is constant that's why the budget line is straight line okay or you can say that when you will consume more of one good other good is going to be same but if you will mention this also this will be right so whenever question comes related to the shape just remember shape means you are going to s means shape and s means slope so just tell because of the slope the shape is like this what can we do right so reason is uh, so now uh, first thing is that why, why your indifference curve is convex because your mrs is diminishing like it is coming down and down so that's why it is convex okay but when your uh, when your slope increases it became concave and when your slope is constant that means it will be a straight line right so now reason is why your slope is diminishing so reason is due to law of diminishing marginal utility a consumer is always willing to sacrifice lesser unit of commodity for the additional unit of another good so that's why your indifference curve is convex to the origin clear okay now coming to third one higher indifference curve represent higher level of satisfaction now for example this is your graph this is your indifference curve one this is your like this One, two, three. You have three indifference curve. Okay. So if I'll ask you that which one is giving you the more satisfaction, right? So you will say, ma'am, this one is giving me more satisfaction. Why? Because higher indifference curve represent large bundle of goods. That is bundle which contain more of both or more of at least one. Clear? So this one is giving you higher level of satisfaction. The first one will give you as compared to these three, right? Among these three, first one will be giving you more. So remember one thing: higher one. higher indifference curve always represent higher level of satisfaction because this is higher right so it is assumed that consumer preference are monotonic we already discussed this so consumer is monotonic that he will always prefer that bundle which give him higher satisfaction because he is monotonic he will not purchase anything less he will purchase either both or more of both the goods or at least more of one good or same of other clear good now next is indifference curve never intersect each other so as i told you your indifference curve are like this right so it should never be like that that okay ma'am this indifference curve is cutting the other one intersecting no so indifference curve never intersect each other it is because if they cut each other the result will be paradox contradiction to the assumption that higher over here for example these two curves for example this was giving you the more satisfaction you can see more 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 but suddenly now this one is higher right here the first one was higher and second one was lower but here second one is higher and first one is lower so as you told me that ma'am higher uh, indifference curve gives you higher satisfaction how will you conclude that which one is higher this one or this one you cannot make a conclusion right and this will be contradicts like paradox to the fact that assumption that higher indifference curve will give you higher satisfaction how will you conclude that which one is higher right if they will intersect clear okay now next is indifference curves do not touch x axis so your this is what indifference curve is like this it cannot be like this right it will uh, sorry it can it will never touch your x axis why an indifference curve cannot touch x axis if it touches x axis that means the consumer will have the same quantity of goods and none of y so for example when you are going to touch this this means you are at zero right this means zero na If you will touch here, that means you are producing zero. You are taking zero, and if you will touch y axis zero, that also means you are taking zero of y. So that's why indifference curve cannot touch x axis because if it will touch, it means the consumer having some quantity of good x and none of y. So that's why it never touches any x axis. Okay, or it will have if see if it will touch if your indifference curve will touch x axis, that means it is having some quantity of y but zero of x. 
but if we'll touch uh, sorry if we'll touch y axis then it means sum of this but zero of y right so such uh, curves are in the contradiction to the assumption that consumption by two goods in different ratios clear okay so now you will write it down properties of indifference curve first second very very important there are high, when i gave my board i got the direct question that what are the properties of indifference curve or you can get the question like this this why indifference curve is convex or why indifference curve slopes left to right downwards why a higher in this one is very important higher indifference ones they, there are high chances they'll be asking you either they'll be asking you the properties or they can ask you why higher indifference curve represent the higher level of satisfaction clear so let's just start i'll just erase it because it become complicated right
Laviva, you are also done with the second point? Yes, teacher.
Um, can you scroll down? Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay, girls, so the last point over here, consumption, uh, contradiction to the assumption that the consumer buys goods in combination. Okay. Touches x axis, then it will be some quantities of y and another. Wait, wait, wait. If it touches x axis, that means the consumer will having some quantity of yes, yes. Good x, y, and good x. Okay. Good one. I just wrote it wrong. No, 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 students. I think you got confused. Wait, it's right. Okay, just let have a look. See, for example, this is 10, 20, 30, and this is 10, 20, 30. So, for example, when your y is 0 and y is 0 and x is 2, so at that moment, uh, x is 10. Okay, so at that moment, how you will represent? You will represent it like this. X is 10 and Y is 0, right? Over here, then it, you will touch X axis. That means you are, what you are doing? Some quantity of X, right? And none of Y because you are not raising. You are here. So that means you are consuming 10 of X good and 0 of Y good, right? And similarly, for example, you have, you are touching this. So that means you are consuming 0 of X good, but 2 or 3 of Y good, right? Yeah. So when you touch x axis, that means you are consuming uh, sum of x, but zero of y. And when you touch y axis, you're consuming sum of y, but zero of x axis. Clear? Yeah. 